Welcome to the Deep Dive. We cut through the noise to get you informed, maybe share a few surprising facts, and hopefully keep things interesting along the way. Today, uh, we're tackling something really critical, a major global cyber attack. It's targeting Microsoft SharePoint, which you know so many organizations rely on every single day. If that's your company, you'll want to stick around for this. We've pulled together a bunch of sources, news reports, analysis from cybersecurity firms, government advisories, all fresh, like from past week, our goal to break down the tech talk, figure out what happened, who's impacted, and really what this all means for, well, all of us in this digital world expect some key insights. Okay, so first things first. For anyone not totally familiar, what is SharePoint? Why is it so important? Right. SharePoint is uh, essentially this big platform lots of places use. Think document management, team collaboration. It's often the backbone, you know, for businesses, government agencies. Super common. Now, the core issue here is what we call a zero-day exploit. It's a key term. It basically means hackers found a vulnerability, a weakness that Microsoft didn't know about. Zero day. So the security folks had literally zero days to fix it before attacks started. Exactly. The attackers found it and boom, they started using it right away. Getting into the specifics, there are two main vulnerabilities here. Uh, CVE 2025-5377 is the big one, critical. It's got a 9.8 CVSS score. 9.8 yeah. out of 10. That's incredibly severe. Oh, yeah. It basically means an attacker can run their own code on your system yeah. remotely without needing a password or anything. Unauthenticated remote code execution. It works through something called uh, deserialization of untrusted data, kind of yeah. tricking the system with bad data. There's also CVE 2025-53771, a spoofing issue. And interestingly, the main one, 53770, it's actually a variant of an older vulnerability, CVE 2025-49706. Okay, so related to something seen before, but different has to be new. Precisely. And here's a really, really important point for everyone listening. These vulnerabilities only hit on-premises SharePoint server. On-premises, meaning yeah. the servers the organizations run themselves. Yeah in their own data centers. Exactly. Not the cloud version. SharePoint Online, that's part of Microsoft 365. If you're using the cloud service, you're uh, you're not directly hit by this specific exploit. That's a crucial distinction. So, okay, extremely serious flaws hitting self-hosted systems. When did this all kick off? What's the timeline? Well, security teams saw attacks happening in waves, like concentrated bursts, mainly on July 18th and 19th. So very recently, a Dutch cybersecurity firm, iSecurity, they were actually the first ones to spot the vulnerability and see it being actively exploited on a mass scale. Wow. They spotted it and the attacks happening. Yeah. They scanned something like 8,000 SharePoint servers across the globe and found dozens already compromised almost immediately. Dozens, just like that. Okay, here's where I think it gets really interesting and frankly kind of scary. Yeah. Tell us about the attack itself. It's called Tool Shell. Right, Tool Shell. It's, um, it's nasty. It lets the hackers get persistent, unauthenticated access. Persistent and unauthenticated. So they can get in without credentials and they can stay in. That's it. They get full access to SharePoint content, files, internal settings, everything. They can run code over the network, no user interaction needed. But here's the kicker, the really alarming part researchers found. The exploit lets them steal cryptographic keys, specifically the validation key. They can pull it right out of memory or the system config. Wait, cryptographic keys? Like the keys the system uses to verify things are legit. Exactly. And if they steal those keys... And they can basically make their own valid login tokens, right? Pretend to be anyone. Precisely. They can impersonate users, services. They can maintain access, maybe through backdoors or modified components, even if you patch the server later, even after a reboot. So patching isn't enough if they've already got the keys. Wow. Correct. Google's threat intelligence group specifically warned this could let attackers bypass future patches, too. Oh, man. Okay, so once they're in, with these keys, maybe, what are they doing? Well... Stealing data, obviously. Passwords. But also moving laterally. Moving laterally. Across the network. Yeah, jumping from the compromised SharePoint server to other connected services. Think OneDrive, Teams, Outlook. And reports suggest they've bypassed even things like multi-factor authentication, MFA, and single sign-on. They're bypassing MFA. That's supposed to be a, a major defense. It is. iSecurity researchers pointed out that this kind of breach can lead to data theft and password harvesting really quickly. It's not a slow process once they're in. So SharePoint becomes like like a launch pad into the rest of the organization's network. Mm -hmm. OneDrive, Teams, email. That's the danger, yes. It's a potential gateway to much more. Okay, you mentioned iSecurity found dozens 
compromised initially. Yeah. What about the broader picture now? How widespread is this thing? It's uh, still unfolding. The full scope isn't totally clear yet. But firms like Sensees, they do internet-wide scanning. They estimated over 10,000 companies running these on-prem SharePoint servers were potentially at risk globally. 10,000. Where are they concentrated? The U.S. had the largest number, according to Sensees. Then the Netherlands, the U.K., Canada. But it's really global. The types of organizations hit are... Well, it's a wide range. Businesses, U.S. federal agencies, state agencies too, universities, energy companies, banks. There was an Asian telecom company mentioned. Victims identified across North and South America, the EU, South Africa, Australia. Any specific examples coming up? Yeah, a few. Like a government agency in Spain, a local agency down in Albuquerque, a university in Brazil. It shows the breadth. And there was one particularly worrying report from a U.S. state official. They said attackers hijacked a public document repository, made the files inaccessible to the agency itself. Hijacked it, like ransomware, or just locked them out. The report said inaccessible, so it sounds pretty serious. Could be ransomware-like, or maybe just disruption. So, putting this all together, what's the bottom line impact of these organizations? Well, Silas Cutler from Sensees called it, and this is a quote, a dream for ransomware operators, which tells you a lot. A dream for ransomware operators. Ouch. Yeah. And Gene Yu, the CEO of Black Panda, another cybersecurity firm, he put it starkly, said something like, when they compromise the fortress that is SharePoint, everybody is kind of at their whim. Because SharePoint security is usually quite high. So breaking that is a major coup for attackers. Absolutely. And crucially, these attacks don't seem targeted at specific organizations. It looks more like a broad a uh, spray and pray approach. Hit as many as possible, indiscriminate. Which makes it even more worrying for anyone running those servers. Okay, yeah. this sounds like an all hands on deck situation. What's Microsoft doing about it? Microsoft reacted relatively quickly once it became public. They put out an alert on Saturday saying they knew about the attacks. That on Sunday, they updated their guidance and released emergency patches. Emergency patches. For which versions? For SharePoint Server 2019 and the SharePoint Server Subscription Edition, they urged customers very strongly to patch immediately. Okay, but what about older versions? That's the catch. They're still working on a fix for SharePoint Server 2016. Still working on it. So 2016 is currently still vulnerable with active attacks happening. As of the latest reports, yes. That version remains exposed while they develop the patch, which is obviously a huge concern. Definitely. So for organizations caught in this, especially those on 2016, what should they be doing like right now? CSIS, that's the U.S. cybersecurity agency, they've warned about widespread impact. They, along with Microsoft and others, have some urgent recommendations. First, patch. Immediately. Apply the updates for 2019 and subscription edition as soon as you possibly can. And for 2016. Disconnect those servers from the Internet now. Until a patch is available and applied, that's the strong advice. Leave them offline entirely. If they're exposed to the internet, yes. It's a drastic step, but given the risk. Also critically, because of that key theft issue we talked about. Right, the cryptographic keys. Yes. Hmm. Organizations need to rotate all cryptographic material, change those keys. This is essential to kick out attackers who might have already stolen the old ones. That sounds complicated. Not just a simple patch job. It's definitely more involved. And if you even suspect you've been compromised, get professional incident response help involved. Don't try to handle it alone. Finally, some technical steps. Configure the AMSI capability, that's the anti-malware scan interface in SharePoint, and make sure you have Microsoft Defender antivirus running on those servers. AMSI helps the antivirus see malicious scripts inside SharePoint. Okay, so patch, disconnect if needed, rotate keys, get help, use AMSI and Defender, that's a lot. It is. And the tone from experts is pretty stark. Michael Sikorsky, he's the CTO at Unit 42, Palo Alto Networks. He basically said, if you have SharePoint on-prem exposed to the internet, you should assume that you have been compromised at this point. Assume compromise. That's a heavy statement. It is. He added, patching alone is insufficient to fully evict the threat. Benjamin Harris from Watchtow echoed that. Assume breach if you were exposed. Patching doesn't undo the initial intrusion if keys were stolen. Hearing that must be tough for IT teams everywhere. It really resets the baseline assumption. You know, listening to this, it feels like we've heard similar stories about Microsoft security challenges recently. Yeah. Does this fit into a broader pattern? It does seem to. Many reports are framing this as uh, yet another setback from Microsoft or the latest cybersecurity embarrassment. Mm. And there is context here. Remember that U.S. government report from earlier this year? It called Microsoft's security culture in need of urgent reform. Right. I remember that report. Pretty critical. 
And last year, the Cyber Safety Review Board, that's a White House group, they looked into the 2023 hack of exchange online mailboxes. Hit government officials, remember? Yeah, the Commerce Secretary was mentioned. Exactly. Their conclusion was that Microsoft's security culture was inadequate. Then in March this year, Microsoft itself warned about Chinese hackers, uh, Midnight Blizzard, targeting tools to spy globally. There's also been criticism that sometimes Microsoft's fixes are too narrow, maybe leaving similar attack paths open. Mm, the whack-a-mole problem, maybe. Mm -hmm. Fix one thing, mm. but not the underlying pattern. Potentially, yeah. And then there was that ProPublica report about using China-based engineers on some U.S. Defense Department cloud projects, which triggered a Pentagon review. So, yes, there's definitely a recent history there creating this broader context. It raises questions, doesn't it? Yeah. About systemic issues versus just individual vulnerabilities. It certainly does, though it's also fair to say that agencies like CISA and the FBI, they're working flat out with partners, including internationally, like Canada and Australia, to tackle this specific threat. The response effort is huge. Right. It's a constant battle. Okay, let's try to recap the key takeaways from this deep dive. We've covered these urgent tool shell zero day attacks hitting on-premises SharePoint, hugely critical systems. We've seen the impact as global hitting all sorts of important organizations. And we learned about the attack methods, especially that cryptographic key theft, which is really concerning because it allows persistent access, even after patching. For you listening, whether you're deep in IT security or just trying to understand the digital world we live in, these kinds of threats matter. It's about data security, sure, but also privacy and just the reliability of services we all depend on. So maybe here's a final thought to leave you with. We just talked about attackers stealing cryptographic keys, basically getting skeleton keys and staying in even after patches. What does this constant cat and mouse game where attackers find these deep, persistent methods really tell us about the future of security? Is achieving true, complete digital safety just always going to be out of reach? Or does this push us to think about security in a fundamentally different, more resilient way? Something to consider. 